aid to communicate broadly, not only to the TUT community members, but to the community members at large, to inform them of the what vac the COVID-19 vaccine is all about, its safety and its e efficacy as a way of debunking this mis of the misinformation around and also to ensure that we increase the uptake of COVID vaccines amongst our communities as a way of decreasing the spread of the, of the COVID-19. I will therefore, without any waste of time, introduce my colleague, who will be giving you information on the vac vaccination itself, who is Sister Nomusa Ngwede. Sister Nomusa is the coordinator of the COVID-19 vaccine site at Swan University of Technology Pretoria campus. She is also a preceptor, a clinical preceptor at the Adelaide Tambo School of Nursing at the Swan University of Technology. Colleagues, let me also allude to you that this is going to be an interactive session. After the speakers have spoken, you will be given an opportunity to ask questions and the speakers we will respond accordingly. Sister Nomusa, let me give this opportunity to you. Uh, <clears throat> Thank you, Dr. Anna. Good afternoon, everyone, uh, and welcome to today's session. Mm -hmm. And I have been duly introduced to the session. I have to mention that we also do have uh, Professor Ramukumba from the Adelaide Tambo School of Nursing Science in our midst, who wow. will also be assisting us with the myths and uh, facts regarding the COVID-19 vaccine. I am going to share with you a presentation. It's very simple, straightforward. Thank you. Um, COVID-19 vaccine and vaccination. Um, it is important that we understand what vaccines are. Vaccines are biological substances used to stimulate the production of antibodies. This trains the immune system to create antibodies. It prepares the causative for the causative agent. Uh, vaccines are biological substances used. Um, a killed or weakened forms of germs and bacteria and forms of bacteria and viruses. They do not cause the disease. That is very important that we understand that. Uh, vaccines have been around us for quite a very long time. Um, in 1749, uh, the first one that was acknowledged was the smallpox vaccine that was uh, that was manufactured or was created or was found or scientifically uh, scientific evidence that we have is of Dr. Edward uh, Jenner, who then performed the first vaccination on James Phillips, who was a child at that time, uh, for the smallpox vaccine. Furthermore, how do they work? Um, remember that vex uh, viruses and bacteria enter your body to attack the cells and multiply. Therefore, it attacks your microphages, B lymphocytes, and your T lymphocytes, which are mostly your white blood cells. And therefore, the vaccine, when one is vaccinated, it goes exactly to those areas so that there is a form of a drill that happens in your immune system to prepare you for when that happens. I always say that when you're preparing for war as a country, you always know who is supposed to be having which weapon at what position, at what time, so that whenever that war happens, you know how to conquer your enemy. That is basically how it works. And in the midst of a drill, you do not kill anyone. So therefore, when you vaccinate, you do not kill people. You're just making sure that you have your systems ready for when you need it. So it prepares the immune system to recognize and defense against the specific virus that you have vaccinated against. And then the different types of vaccines, we've got the mRNA vaccine and the viral vector vaccine, which none of them are actually active viruses that are injected into your body. Uh, therefore, uh, they are deemed to be safe because trials and studies are done before they can be 
given out to people or can be inoculated into people's arms or legs or buttocks, whatever the mode is at that time. And um, they then keep the memory for the future fight. And then when coming to the COVID-19 vaccine, uh, one would ask uh, who should vaccinate or who should postpone vaccinating. It is very important that people with history of severe allergic reaction postpone vaccination until they have consulted with their doctors or physician to clarify because your doctor or your physician would have your file, will know exactly your condition and how to treat it. And we also say pregnant and breastfeeding women should not uh, vaccinate now, but rather postpone it for when the gestation is done, that has, uh, or that the period of uh, breastfeeding has been completed. Because uh, vaccines are never tested on pregnant or lactating women, so their safety at that time cannot be established, and you just want to be sure. This is just for caution. People with flu, you postpone it for 14 days it's because uh, we understand that uh, COVID has the similar symptoms as that of flu. At a point, if one has more uh, mild uh, COVID uh, illness, it will be easily missed as flu, so then it is easy to miss it. Therefore, it is important that every person with flu is treated as every person who has COVID and we are precautious in that because then we know that your immune system is already fighting something else and we don't want to put a drill on top of another fight that is happening. And then uh, is it normal to have side effects? This is a question that I get mostly from the site when we have vaccines. Yes, it is very much normal to have side effects. Vaccines are designed to give you immunity without the danger of getting the severe disease because Im your immune system is instructing your body to react in a way. It will increase your blood flow and that will then in turn have uh, increased uh, body temperature. And because now your body is identifying the vaccine as a potential threat, and therefore it is getting ready to fight. Um, the other thing that you would have is it, whether we have quite now established that there are common side effects to the vaccine, which will include uh, pain, swelling, and redness, where the vaccination uh, site has been where you have been injected and there would be, there might be mild fever, the operative word being mild, uh, might, in a sense that not everyone gets uh, to have the side effect of uh, the, the, the vaccine, the chills, feeling tired, headache, uh, muscle and joint aches. Uh, the rare ones that uh, might happen, but we have not come across it, is the difficulty breathing, swelling of the face and throat, a fast uh, heart beats, a bed rash all over your body, dizziness and weakness. This is also classified as the an uh, anaphylactic reaction to vaccine. And should that happen, we have to actually report it because it is then um, something that doesn't naturally uh, normally happens, it will be a rare case and we have to uh, record such cases so that we have, we can be prepared in the future for such events. And then how long should the symptoms last or when should one be worried? The vaccine side effects should resolve within two to three days after being administered, administered with the COVID-19 vaccine and the side effects can last at most to a week. And after that, you should be fine. But should it happen that it lasts longer than that, I think I will tell you how to, 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 to manage that one. But uh, the normal or the mild uh, side effects you uh, for headache and fever, I always say paracetamol and then you can rest and, and, re and hydrate yourself. Uh, pain in injection site, please avoid scratching because when you scratch, you will then, it, you can become septic from that because there's now that little hole, no matter how little it is, your fingers and your nails can cause um, bacteria to go in there and you can have uh, be septic from that. And then you need to call your doctor if the redness and pain increases over 24 hours and side effects are worrying, or if you have side effects that are worrying over the time and then they're not resolving within the two to three days. And the other thing that I always say is that 
we need to listen to our bodies. If your body tells you, no, it's more than just that. You need to now start acting on it. Because remember that we do not test people before vaccinating them. Therefore, we do not know if you are asymptomatic to COVID and you're not having any symptoms and you can still be vaccinated without you knowing that you have COVID. And then when you start showing the symptoms, you will think it's the symptoms. On the other hand, when it was like you already had COVID prior to vaccination. And then um, we have to talk about uh, the elephant in the room, which was said to be blood clots in the beginning of the year, uh, where six cases were reported in the American population uh, after they had inoculated over 6.7 million people. And then there was a uh, a report on clots, especially regarding the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. Uh, it is important that we understand that uh, blood clots uh, that develop after vaccination are called uh, the vaccine-induced thrombosis, and they are very extremely rare condition. In our country, local experts and uh, treatments are available, and uh, SAPRA has confirmed that after the first phase of vaccination, which was specifically with the Johnson & Johnson, there were no cases reported of blood clots. But should it happen, we have uh, a system in place to manage it. And then it is important that one understand what the symptoms are because they knew so that you can not miss it and also be able to get treatment in time. It will be severe headache with blood vision, vomiting weakness on one side of the body or difficulty speaking. Severe abdominal pain that can cause, uh, that can also be associated with vomiting. A rash of tiny red spot might okay under the skin around the injectable side, leg pain, swelling, uh, chest pain or shortness of breath. These are the symptoms that can be associated with um, vaccine-induced uh, thrombosis. And uh, when it is important that if one has uh, side effects uh, from the vaccine, they are reported to SAPRA. These are the details, but it is also important that you use the COVID-19 hotline, which is 0800 uh, the benefits of being vaccinated, it is increased uh, cross-border travel and decreased hospitalization in death. Uh, in other countries, uh, they have now said that uh, one, it's, it's, you, you're less likely to, 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 to transmit the virus to another person. But that can only happen if you have been vaccinated and the other person has been vaccinated. When one has not been vaccinated, remember that you will not have severe disease, but you can still pass it to the next person. So it is important that we encourage each other and also make sure that we all come together and fight against COVID. And the only way you know, we can now say is uh, we get vaccinated and we continue using our mask until we reach uh, head immunity. Um, thank you. From now on, I would then request that um, Prof. Ramukumba does the myths and uh, facts on the vaccine and vaccination regarding the COVID-19. Uh, uh, then we, from there, we can then uh, have our question and answer session where we can be able to demystify this myth. Thank you. Just remember to unmute yourselves when you're speaking. Oh, so, sorry. Uh, thank you so much, Sister Nomusa, for the brief and straight to the point, but very informative presentation. I think by now you have given us information about what vaccines are and what happens when one gets vaccine. How does the body respond in order for one to get those antibodies? and also the side effects that one would experience after receiving the vaccination. And that is very important. And over and above, you've told us what should one do 
when experiencing those side effects and should any adverse reaction happens where to report them. So without wasting time, let me also introduce both Prof. Tendani Ramukumba, who is also a nursing lecturer at the Adelaide Tambo School of Nursing. She will be giving us information on the myths versus the facts surrounding vaccines. Prof, your, this is your time. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much, um, Prof. Sif Dr. Sifulosa, for the prompt introduction. <clears throat> I'm going to open just for a short time so that you can ascribe the face to the voice. This is my face. Um, I'm also now going to start with the presentation. It's on a uh, myth and fact. It's um, based on the information that we heard from Ms. Nguenya. I think my job is very easy. It's just to say um, there are facts and there are myths and there are rumors. What the social media is saying is not necessarily a research information. It's not necessarily facts. So the myth number one is that vaccine, uh, uh, COVID-19 vaccine can affect fertility with myths such as um, or false report on media saying that the protein spikes a protein called syncytin one that is involved in the growth of uh, and attachment of the placenta in pregnancy, thus disturbing the pregnancy. There are also rumors that vaccine alters the fertility of men and cause erect, erectile dysfunction. When you go about to hear people asking you about this question as a nurse to say, uh, inform us what is the correct information. But the facts are, COVID, the COVID-19 vaccine will not affect fertility. The COVID-19 vaccine encourages the body to create copies of this spike protein found on the coronavirus surface, not related to the reproductive protein. And the rumors on um, erectile dysfunction and uh, COVID-19 affecting menhood, it's, they're just rumors. They are not proven scientifically. We are yet waiting for somebody to conduct studies on that, and then we can dispel the rumor. Myth number two, if I have already had COVID-19, I don't need a vaccine. So people will be asking, I already had COVID-19, I do not need to be vaccinated. Fact, the fact is, people who have gotten sick with COVID-19 may still benefit from getting vaccinated. Early evidence uh, from research suggests that natural immunity from COVID-19 may not last very long but more studies are needed to better understand this, as this is a relatively new disease that have not been researched or longitudinal studies have not been uh, completed yet. <coughs> Such as uh, rushed the, that's a myth, that uh, researchers rushed the development of COVID-19 vaccine. The myth is that uh, the COVID-19 vaccine effectiveness and safety cannot be trusted it is, was, as it was developed in a rash manner. The fact is Pfizer's, BioNTech and Moderna were created with a method that had been involved uh, in development for more than 20 years. This is the same type of uh, technology that was used to develop a vaccine against uh, a, a, some other very serious diseases that were found to be emerging in the, in the Central African region. China isolated and shared genetic information about COVID-19 promptly and this was shared throughout the whole world. And therefore, people were able to take this technology and move it forward to develop vaccines. Uh, no steps were skipped, but some steps were fast-tracked in order to come to conclusion. Um, getting the vaccine 
uh, mean I can stop wearing my mask and taking coronavirus uh, precaution? This, the myth thereof is a person can say, I can stop wearing my mask <clears throat> and taking coronavirus precautions because I am vaccinated. The Center for Disease Control, uh, their position is that vaccinated people should continue to take precautionary measures as stipulated by laws and regulations of the country in which they are. Here in South Africa, we are uh, we are controlled or we are we are we we execute the lockdown system that is pronounced by the national government, and we need to be able to abide with those rules. Getting the meth, the, the COVID-19 vaccine gives you COVID-19 disease. The me, there are two things that I want to address there. The fact, if I get the COVID-19 vaccine, I will be sick. And also that the side effects of COVID-19 vaccines are very dangerous. For fact, for, for the myth number one, the vaccine for, for vaccine 19 cannot and will not give you COVID-19 disease. The vaccine does not contain uh, COVID-19 virus or the actual virus, but instruct the body to produce a protein that helps to fight the virus, like with many other uh, intruders in the body. The body has a way of fighting, as it was stipulated by Ms. Nguyenia. The side effects of COVID-19 are dangerous. The vaccine developer report that some people experience pain uh, where they were injected body aches, headaches, or fever lasting for a day or two. These are the signs that the vaccine is working, or what we call seroconversion, to stimulate your immune system. If symptoms persist beyond two or three days, you should be able to call your doctor and consult regarding that. The COVID-19 vaccine enters your cells and changes your DNA. The question could be the basic construct of the body. Uh, the fact is COVID-19 vaccines are designed to develop your body immune system uh, and to help them fight the coronavirus. The RNA, uh, which was mentioned in the previous presentation, does not enter the cell but does enter the cell, so it does enter the cell, but not the nucleus of the cell to can temper with your DNA. Therefore, be rest assured when the mRNA gets into your cell, it, it stimulates the cell to fight the intruder rather than de destroy your DNA. Another myth is that the vaccine 19... Uh, the COVID-19 vaccine was developed with or contains controversial substances. The facts are Pfizer were authorized by the FDA, which is an American company. And in South Africa, SAPRA uh, do uh, investigate and do a thorough check of everything that goes to the public in terms of promoting health to ensure safety and to exclude unacceptable substances. Therefore, those vaccines that are allowed to be uh, circulated in South Africa do not have unacceptable substances. The, our, the vaccines that are being given do not contain human and animal tissues. This is the end. This, these are the references that were used. Thank you. Ah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. Rabukumba, for the presentation. Very informative. And I believe by giving this information, uh, we will try to, you are trying to debunk the 
misinformation or disinformation surrounding the vaccine. Yes, we have heard a lot of things and have seen on social media, especially TikTok, whereby people were talking about what vaccines do that has not been scientifically proven up to date. And what we have learned today was that the vaccine has been approved by the FDA and it doesn't have that it doesn't contain any human tissue as people have been claiming. And also that even if you have vaccinated, you still have to follow the protocols and regulations as per government lockdown regulation, whereby you still have to social distance and wear your mask. I heard one speaker saying yesterday that if you're wearing a bulletproof, it doesn't necessarily mean that you will not be, get shot, but you will get shot, but the protection is more because of the fact that you are wearing the bulletproof. So the same applies to vaccine. Once you've vaccinated, you are, it's like you are wearing a bulletproof. And I hope this will help in increasing the uptake and the confidence of COVID-19 amongst our population. I will therefore take this opportunity to invite questions so that our two speakers can respond to those questions. I have one question here in the chat box. It says, what happens when you take the jab while you are not aware that you are COVID-19 positive? Is it recommended for one to test prior taking the jab? Sister Nomusa, can you respond to that? Uh, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Anna. Um, we can not recommend people to test before taking the jab. Reasons being that um, if you have to test, I always say you will test today at 2 o'clock, and then you will, fi you will find that you get your results tomorrow. We are not sure what will happen between today and tomorrow when you get your results. Neither are we sure who you will come into contact with between the time you got your results to the time you get to be inoculated. So therefore, there is no practicality in that uh, unless we test you and isolate you immediately in that place. And then after your results come, then we inoculate you. And I do not think that we have the facility, neither the confidence to do that. But what is important is that we encourage clients to be very, very honest about their conditions. When one come to a, gets to a testing station, we always have a question that says, do you have any symptoms or that are flu-like? Uh, where if you do have, we'll then request that you you do not uh, you po you postpone uh, getting vaccinated on that day until those symptoms have subsided, because we understand that they are more or less the same as that of uh, COVID, and it's not everyone that is severely sick. And then if one has now had their positive results, we also request that they stay for, uh, for 30 days if they have not uh, been admitted before they can get their jab. I hope that answers the question. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Sister Nomusa, for the response. Colleagues, I must mention that you can post your questions in the chat box. I will look into those and monitor those, and then we will respond accordingly. Another question is, what happens if I coincidentally get a jab and then it happens that I'm COVID-19 positive? Uh, thank you. I actually have to say that I had a client, um, without mentioning any name for ethical reasons, uh, this week on choose on Monday. She tested. She she was inoculated on the 9th of June, and then she tested positive. Her results were for, of the 11th of June. So what it meant is that she already had COVID before she went for vaccines for her first dose. And she did get her second dose, I might say. But what now happens is that because she, when she got to the center where she received her first uh, vaccine, she did not have any, vac uh, any signs. She was vaccinated and she is still alive. So um, what happens is uh, we cannot really 
tell what really happens to the body. But what happens, I always say that you cannot have a drill on top of a fight. When it's a fight that is already happening, you let the fight come down and then only then you look at what has happened and then you take it from there. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Nomusa. Another question is, how can you prove physically this virus and give the ingredients of this vaccine, please? I think this one I will direct to Prof. Ramukumba. How can one prove physically this virus and give ingredients of this vaccine? I am not sure if I understand the question clearly. Um, does the person mean that you you need you need to prove that you physically have the virus in your body and give the relevant um, uh, uh, variant of a uh, uh, vaccine or you are physically strong but be that as it may the there is no way a health worker can prove that the vaccine that is um, in that uh, vial is, uh, is, is associated with what you are physically, with the person's physical body and the person's physical makeup. What we know is that the vaccine was created with the mind of stimulating reaction of the body, of a human body, to create those antibodies that we call that will be fighting or we call the protein that fights the vax no i want to use the term that is not i don't want to use that the, 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 the that is able to fight the covid 19 virus at the time we are even not sure, research has not shown that uh, the vaccine that uh, we are given will be able to protect you from the many variants of vaccines that are coming thereafter. We hear there's now vaccine Lambda, there will be the vaccine Tita, as they are being named in um, Chinese counting method. So we do not know. Uh, whether the one, the tenth one, the twentieth one will come, and you will still, you will still be uh, able to prove that you have been vaccinated. What we are working on with is what we have today. We have a vac um, COVID-19 virus that is a pandemic at this current time. We need to deal with it using the vaccines that are available to us. I don't know what else can a health worker prove in terms of physically before the vaccine is given. I hope I am addressing the questions as they come. Okay, thank you very much, Prof. I hope what you've just said almost likely to, is almost likely to answer what has been asked here. Yeah. But if that is not the case, the person who asked the question will furthermore try to clarify the question if, she's, if he is not happy with the response. The other question directed to Sister Nomusa here is what is the difference between the Pfizer and the JJ vaccine, especially in terms of its effectiveness? Thank you. Uh, thank you. The Pfizer vaccine is, um, we call it the community that is manufactured by Pfizer. And then the other one, it's the Janssen COVID-19 that is manufactured uh, by Johnson & Johnson. The differences between the two vaccines are that the other one has um, two jabs, which is the Pfizer. And they, in South Africa, we ha they have split them, the two doses, uh, in 42 days. And then, in, then uh, the Johnson & Johnson is a single dose that one gets and then you are fully vaccinated. But for Pfizer, you must have two, vac two doses before you are fully uh, vaccinated. Then um, in that regard, the, if, the, the efficacies, that's what we call it, is not the effectiveness, it's the efficacy. In, in regarding the efficacy, we have um, on, the, on the 1st of July, when uh, there was a, a, a study that was now published by Johnson & Johnson regarding so in South Africa, the efficacy of Johnson & Johnson, of the, of the Janssen COVID-19 vaccine, 
uh, have been reported to be 85% efficacy. And then that one of uh, Pfizer was then reported to be 95% efficacy. So they have a 10% difference. But what is important is that we understand that according to the World Health Organization, a vaccine is said to be having uh, adequate efficacy if it, it has 50% of um, efficacy protect, for protection, then it is uh, said to be adequate and up to standard. So with the two, the other one is 85%, the other one is 95%. And the other one is a single dose and the other one is multiple dose, which are two doses that you will need to get 42 days apart. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Nomusa, for the response. I hope you have answered the question. Like I said, if anyone is not happy with the response, she or he will resend the question on the chat box. The other question is, is it advisable to take aspirin as a precaution to prevent blood clots after vaccination? Um. Go ahead, Nomas. Thank you. I would say no. The reason is um, like any other medication, aspirin has its own side effects. And unless you have been diagnosed with a clotting problem and then you have seen your physician or your GP, whoever that is treating you prior to the vaccination, then you will be able to, to know what is it that is, is, is in line with your health. What is it that you need to do? Because now if you're going to say people must start taking aspirin before or after taking the, the, the jab, you tend to be in a situation where people are going to start having bleeding disorders because they probably do not know what conditions they have themselves. Therefore, it is important that one consult before taking any medication that you think you want to prevent something so that in the in the in the in the attempt of preventing something you do not end up creating another problem no I w then the answer will be please consult with your physician before you take such measures and then if you have a clotting problem also mention it in the vaccine center and then we will currently in South Africa I can tell you this week we have both uh, vaccines available and then if you have if you more scared of um, the clots and stuff then we can always uh, give you the, the the Pfizer which has no it has never been linked to the clots and clotting factors but then it's only the Johnson and Johnson that was linked to that but then in the American and it was six people out of 6.7 million people that were vaccinated thank you thank you sister Numusa. well said Another question directed to you, how long does the immunity last after receiving the vaccination? Um, it is unfortunate that on that one, we can never commit ourselves to say how long does it last. Uh, the idea of vaccination uh, in this pandemic was that uh, we vaccinate a lot of people at a short space of time. We reach herd immunity and then only then within we know that even if we still do get people who will have the virus or the, co the condition after we have vaccinated to reach uh, herd immunity, we will have enough resources to cater for their needs that will happen. So unfortunately, we do not have an answer to that one. Thank you, Sister. Can you also explain the criteria, the current criteria that the national rollout is using with regard to who should be vaccinated and where should they be vaccinated? Um, currently, we the, the country followed a, a, a three-phase plan. The first phase uh, had um, the healthcare workers of the country, and uh, that were those who started with their vaccines at the end of um, February until around about April. Then it, they they opened uh, that for the 60s and above, and then we then moved. I think uh, it was supposed to the to be the first. Uh, we moved to the 50s and above. 
And then on the 1st of August, it was supposed to be the 35 and above, but it was then shifted earlier. And currently we are still vaccinating the people who are 35 and above um, that can still register. So we are waiting on the national rollout plan that is supposed to be from the 1st of September that we will do the 18 and above that. But what it means is that even if you are 60, you can still be vaccinated. Even if you're a healthcare worker who are supposed to be in the first phase and for whatever reasons you could not be vaccinated, you can still be vaccinated as long as we call it legibility. If you are legible to vaccinate, you will be 35 and above healthcare worker, even if you are younger than that, you will still be vaccinated. And then um, currently we are waiting for that. And where can one be vaccinated? The city of Tswane or the Tswane Metropolitan has different areas where people can be vaccinated that are, are identified. But people are also welcome to come and visit our vaccination site at TUT by the Cricket Club where they can be assisted to get their vaccine. You do not have to be a TUT employee to use our facility. You just need to be as a, a, a citizen that is eligible, whether you are from a foreign country, as long as you've registered, the system has allowed you and you're eligible, we can assist you. What Thank is the you. building building number of the cricket club? As, uh, we car I think I don't know the building number, but what happens is that we have uh, marshals by the gate in the main gate, TUT, when you get there, they, you just tell them you are going to the vaccination, they will direct you. It's next. It's not far from the gate. It's uh, there by the cricket uh, sport, uh, grounds. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Nomusa. Also adding to that is that the site is only operational on Monday, uh, Wednesdays and Thursdays from eight to four o'clock. And another question posed to Sister Nomusa is, I know you have mentioned this before, but the uh, question is arose to say that what are the side effects of taking the vaccines? Currently, the side effect is the painful arm. It can be painful and a bit of redness and swelling, the left arm. We are inoculating on the left arm. That will be the arm that will be painful. It can feel painful and numb, but it lasts for, uh, for two to three days. You can have fever and chills. You can have um, uh, muscle pains and aches. You can also have, uh, some people have reported also diarrhea. But I have to also say that no person is a book but what you know is that you will know this is now abnormal. This is not supposed to be happening, but we expect that you will have like your fluish like symptoms that you might have. And even if you don't get them, not everyone gets them, even if you don't get them, it does not necessarily mean that the vaccine is not working, but it will be how your body reacts when it is doing the drill on its own. So everyone is different from the other. Thank you so much, Sister Nomosa. We don't have any questions anymore in the chat box. So I think we have come to the conclusion of our discussion. And I see there's someone typing there. Let me just wait. Uh, the question is, what is what, which, what campus is this available? At which campuses? The vaccine? Uh, we are at the Pretoria campus. Start at the list road, that one. <laughs> Start artillery road, Pretoria West campus. Thank you so much and thank you all for the opportunity. Uh, in closing, I will request Prof Ramukumba to uh, give a closing remarks on, on our behalf. Prof. <coughs> I must say um, it is important that as citizens we take responsibility and get ourselves vaccinated. If as adults, I know majority of adults in South Africa who have children were able to take their children for jabs and children are getting up to three injections a day in, this, in the uh, vaccination program and we take them there and they get those jabs to protect them from diseases such as measles and others that we can mention. 
as adults, we can do with one or two jabs. Really, we can do with one or two jabs. And uh, I wish we can all access the government website so we can demystify the misinformation that is the, out there on vaccines and all the things that we are hearing or that we get to see in the social media regarding uh, uh, vaccinations. Thank you very much. We hope to see you at, the, at each and every vaccination point in Tswane, in Gauteng, and throughout South Africa. Sorry, there's one more question that I think is important. Okay. Uh, this question is directed to Sister Nomusa. It says, why are these vaccines used in South Africa and not in America or Europe? Um, that is one of the myths we're trying to demystify today. Thank you for the question. The vaccines that we are using in South Africa are the very same vaccines that have been used in other countries. Um, the only vaccine that we have not used currently in uh, South Africa is the, we're still waiting for the rollout or, or the availability of the Sinovac that has been approved last month to be used in South Africa. And I must say that currently uh, we know that there is a, bulk of vaccines that arrived this week, which is the Pfizer, 6 million vaccines that were donated by the American uh, country. That is after they had access to quite a lot of them and then they realized they will not need all of them and they are now donating it to other countries that still needs them. So they have been using the very same one. I have friends in other, in the US and uh, in the UK who have already had their jabs and some of them had the Johnson and Johnson and some of them had the Pfizer vaccine. So we are using the same one. There um, is no difference. If I may add, the South Africa, you saw the president uh, um, who was at with the WHO presenting and requesting the fact that Africa be able to manufacture its own uh, vaccines. And the fact that uh, some countries in Africa have been uh, identified where vaccinations can be manufactured. In South Africa, it is Aspian, and the Aspian company is in a, a previously called uh, Port Elizabeth. I'm not sure if I can spell it right, Geberich uh, City. And the, those vaccines is Johnson & Johnson. Those vaccines are just as good as vaccines uh, that have been manufactured anyway. The Johnson & Johnson have borrowed South African Aspian the skills and the know-how to manufacture the same kind of vaccines. It's not less effective because it's made in South Africa. It's equally effective. Thank you. Thank you so much, colleagues. I think after this session, we will go and join the queue and get ourselves vaccinated so that we can help our country to reach the herd immunity and we get back to our normal lives and we improve our livelihoods as well as the economy of the country. Let me also take this opportunity to thank the organizer, Mr. Christaute and the colleagues as well and all the attendants that have been listening to us and that has been chatting with us on the chat box. I thank you and wish you all of the best. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Thank you, colleagues. OK, we have stopped the streaming. Um, thank you for uh, realizing that I'm um, taking the questions from Facebook and just pasting them into the chat box. OK. Okay, thank you for, for noticing that. And then what we're going to do now, this video is on um, Facebook and on um, YouTube. And I will ask um, Corporate Affairs to send out a link to the YouTube so that people can watch it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Chris. And Thanks. when was Thank that? you, Chris. Thanks for a very informative session. And Chris, when will that be?
Uh, I will send it through to uh, them now. I don't know how long they are going to take. No, okay. Thank okay. you so much. Yeah, send the, the link out. And then, um, I'll see you on Thursday. Tomorrow. Tomorrow? No, tomorrow is Wednesday. Are you coming on Thursday? Yeah, I'm there Wednesday. I'm, I'm there yesterday, tomorrow. And then tomorrow I'm doing the LA ALP and then okay. on the... no, it's fine. I'll see. Oh, by the way, tomorrow I have um yeah, I have I have I have a photo shoot somewhere there. So it's fine. Okay. I'll see you on <laughs> and I'm bringing my uncle on Thursday. And and I'm seeing you for my second jab on the twenty sixth. Twenty sixth of August. August, yes. Okay, no problem. Time for my second I one. can't wait. I'll come to work to come and give you a jab, Chris. <laughs> Ah, thank you. That would be awesome. <laughs> okay, colleagues. Uh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, thank you, colleagues. I will wait for the link. Yellow. Remember, I told you that the nurses are attending training tomorrow. Yes, you did. You did. Oh. And I, I, I think I will, uh, I, I will just have to, to, to have other alternative plans. But you did mention. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. Bye. Thanks, colleagues. Bye. Thanks. Bye. 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 Bye.